there probably be a lot of people telling me not to make this video professional suicide don't talk about religion or politics and you guys know me I'm just gonna talk about whatever I'm freaking what matters and I'm not saying anybody has to agree with me but I'm gonna share how I feel and this is how I feel as somebody who was raised extremely religious I grew up in the Mormon faith and a lot of people don't think they're Christians and I'd say most Mormons would be very offended by that they're definitely Christians I'd say the biggest difference on Mormons versus regular Christianity is that they Mormons don't push the you're inherently bad thing like most other Christian believers believe and I don't want to talk about this because some people will say oh stay in your lane don't talk about religion I'm like no this is my lane because I have seen Christianity mess up people's mindsets so much I'm so tired of it and I'm just gonna speak my freaking truth so thank you yeah that's what people think I'm gonna I'm gonna share my life experience okay and what I see over and over and over and over as a, as a mindset coach and it's this I want you to think of any other relationship in your life in which someone told you that you are nothing without them, that you are bad, that you are inherently bad. And if you don't do everything that they say, then you're going to be, you're going to go to a really, really scary, bad place. That is manipulation. That is mind control. That is so disgusting. Imagine you were in a romantic relationship in which someone told you that without me, you're nothing. You need me in order to have a good life. And you're inherently bad, but don't worry, I'll teach you how to be. Now, I have no problems with the example of, like, Jesus Christ, like, all the stories. They're beautiful. They're, you know, enlightened concepts. But guess what? The Bible that everybody goes around, like, preaching, that didn't even exist for hundreds of years. It didn't even exist. You know who put together the Bible as we have it? It's the freaking Catholic priest that wanted control over everybody. And when I lived in Spain in college, I went to freaking every cathedral in Spain and I, I was disgusted. It was all about money. It was all about power. And I've been looking at mindsets, right? I'm, I'm like in the freaking trenches with people every single day on mindset. And all I ever see come from Christianity is low self-esteem, low self-worth. Think about it. I am nothing. And guess what? You know what? Jesus never even said that shit. He never, there's nowhere, nowhere where Jesus said, you're nothing without me. I'm coming here and I'm dying for you. And if you don't do everything that the people after me say, then you're going to a scary place called hell. He never said any of that. <laughs> and I, 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 I have thought about this so much. I have kept my mouth shut for so freaking long. But I'm tired of seeing people disempower themselves into this belief system that I am nothing without Jesus saving me. I'm like, who told you that? Did you sit deep in meditation on a mountain and you never heard anything about Jesus? And all of a sudden, this all this huge intuitive thing came in. It was like, there was this guy that lived thousands of years ago and, and you're nothing without him. No, that's not what happened. It was trained into us, taught into us, programmed into us. And I'm, I'm sick of it because it's literally like narcissistic abuse to tell somebody that they're nothing without someone else. That inherently, all on your own, you're bad. You're nothing. And you're going to go to a really scary place if you don't do everything that we say. It's riddled with shame, guilt, low self-worth. I'm sick of it. Yes, I'll, I'll share this. I know I'm going to take some heat for it. Here's the thing with religion. I hear people say, and I appreciate their, you know, <laughs> goodness. They're like, religion has a lot of good in it. Of course it does. Of course it does. Or nobody would buy into it. Anybody who's been in a relationship with somebody who's really manipulative, what do they do? Love bombing, future faking, all this good stuff. You're the most amazing person ever. I love you so much. We're going to have this amazing life together. Look at all the good things that are going to come. We're powerful. Blah, 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 blah. There's always good. And the thing that I, the beef that I have with religion is that they're acting like it's, it's, uh, exclusive to the religion. They're taking human concepts of love, unconditional love, service, caring for others, um, staying in, you know, the prayer or like communing with the divine. Those are not exclusive to religion. You can have those without religion, without all this, these rules and putting us into this box of all this stuff of how you have to be, how you're supposed to be. The mindset that I see is 
okay, I have no trust in myself because by myself, I'm bad and I don't know what to do with my life and I don't know how to like tap into my own moral compass and all this stuff. I got to have somebody else tell me how to be. Tell me how I should feel. Tell me how I should act. And I, my life got so effed from this. I was programmed from a young child, as little as I can remember. You know what happened when I got out of religion? I hadn't worked on that mindset yet, and I got into a very abusive, controlling relationship in which I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, you know better than I do. Somebody else knows better than me. I can't trust myself. And man, it's been a freaking process. That's why I've done so many plant medicine journeys. If you've been heavily freaking brainwashed your whole life, I had to do a lot of unprogramming, a lot. And what I have learned is we don't need a middleman between us and our moral compass, our higher selves, the divine source, whatever you want to call it. All right, let me go back and look at some of your comments because I was driving. That's what civilization did, organized religion. Organized religion is control. If you can't see that, I'm sorry. Like, it's just, it's blatant. It's blatant. And guess what? My mom, when my mom, right before she had her stroke that sent her into a nursing home, my mom was living off $1,500 a month. I was just starting my business, barely making it. I was buying groceries for her. She didn't have money for food. When I became her power of attorney and looked through her bank statements, I was like, what is this $350 check twice a month? What is this? Look at the check to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. My mom didn't even have money for food. And she was back paying tithing because she's not allowed to go to the Mormon temple unless she's caught up on her tithing. She didn't even have money for food. I did not have holidays sometimes as a kid because we had to pay money to our church. And you know what I learned when I got out of it? You know how goddamn relieving it was to be like, I can donate to whatever I want. I don't have to, or all this scary stuff comes in. If you're not worthy, you're not good enough. I'm not even surprised when powerful people politicize health, food, climate, etc. even when they're already politicized the divine and the unconscious. Yeah, exactly. I see religion as being one of the biggest reasons that we have so such low self-esteem, low self-worth, because the... The mindset is, it, it disconnects you from yourself. It's here's how you should be. I didn't even know that I lived in shame and guilt until I left religion. And I look back and I was like, oh my gosh, I chronically felt like I was never good enough, that I was never meeting up to some expectation. The Bible is penned by man. Exactly. <laughs> the, Christian, the, the Catholic priests, hundreds of years after Jesus died, took a bunch of letters fit the ones together that made that, you know, had good stuff in it too, but fit their agenda and then made the Bible out of it. And then the people who gave more money got more power in the church. And it's, it's frustrating. I'm actually relieved to see so many of you guys like are <laughs> on the same mindset as me because it's hard sometimes. It's like scary to talk about, right? Like this is scary for me to talk about. I fully admit Every time I've ever brought it up, I get emails from people like you're polarizing people. How dare you disrespect me? You know, and, and that's the thing. I've been so over the map since I left religion. I've like gone from like, dude, when you were heavily brainwashed your entire life and you have to completely reintegrate with society in a totally new mindset and just invest tons of money, time, energy into like just re like reorganizing your brain and how you see life. It's hard to not be a little mad. <laughs> okay, when I was a little kid, I grew up singing, follow the prophet, don't go astray, and all this scary stuff that was going to happen to me if I didn't stay faithful, and all these threats and scares, and, you know, Satan's going to get me, and all this stuff. That's not what happened. <laughs> what happened was I connected to my spiritual side a thousand times more ever, because I trusted myself, and there was no middleman, and there was no shoulds, and fear. If you think religion isn't based on fear, oh my God, heaven and hell. Did you know that the apostle Paul stole that from the Greeks, from Plato? <laughs> think about it. Think if I told you, okay, if you guys don't do my keto program, you're guaranteed going to get diabetes 100%. You're 100%. Every single person who doesn't gets, my di gets diabetes. <laughs> you know, it's like this big scary thing. Because guess what? Hell, no one knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. That is one thing I've learned is like a lot of people are not comfortable with not knowing stuff. There's comfort that comes in like, oh yeah, that's how I was. Oh yeah, I know exactly how it works. There was like this like 
pre-earth life and then like Jesus and Satan and then there's this battle and then we went to then we go to earth and then there's these different places you go depending on how faithful and good you are and like yep I know how it all works <laughs> we like that right we like the 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 comfort of knowing but nobody freaking knows nobody knows if there's such thing as hell or heaven nobody freaking knows that but there's plenty of people who will tell you that because guess what the in marketing anybody who understands marketing even a little knows that the most powerful marketing in the world is when you scare somebody there's fear these are all the bad things that are going to happen to you if you don't do this and and then there's all the, the big prize these are all the amazing things that will happen to you if you do this and that's what religion does. That's what heaven and hell, the concept of heaven and hell is. <laughs> yeah, fear and scare tactics. And I'm bringing it up because every single person that I've worked with who was raised Christian has low self-esteem, doesn't trust themselves, has people-pleasing tendencies, and all this mindset muck that they have to get through, even if they're not in that religion anymore. So, like, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. It's blatant lies and manipulation, fear mongering, control, money, power. That's how I see organized religion. Sorry, I'm just being real with you. Once you've been in it and you get out. So if you're in religion and you've always been in religion, I don't want to hear your perspective. I'm sorry. I don't. Because you haven't experienced the post religious, like crazy aha moments that happen. That's like somebody's like saying like, I know what it, it like if you're talking about like getting in shape and you're still obese, don't talk to me about what it takes to get in shape. If you don't, if you've never gotten in shape after being overweight, you don't know what it's like, right? <laughs> so it's like that, you know, my dad is still Mormon and we got into it one time. He's like, how come you didn't come to me and talk to me first? And I'm like, I'm going to be honest with you, dad, like no disrespect, but like you haven't walked the path that I've walked. You're still in that. It's like talking to a beast, obese person about how to get in shape who's never been in shape before. Much love, but like, that's how it is. That's why I didn't come talk to you. <laughs> uh, I should definitely watch Midnight Mass by Mike Flanagan. Gorgeous short series of profound messages. Yeah. Yeah, brave. I know. Thank you. It does. It's, it's freaking scary, dude, because people like come at you so freaking hard if you talk about this stuff. But I'm talking about it because... I'm just like, I, I seriously got, I have like actually recorded like two full podcasts on this and haven't had the guts to release them. <laughs> Cause as I've, I, I go into deep thought a lot and I thought, why do so many people have such low self-esteem? And then I see people, I live in Utah, right? So I like, I saw a guy at the gym today. It says like, I am nothing without Christ. Holy shit, dude. You're nothing. You're nothing. Hmm. Somebody posted on my TikTok a comment. They said, uh, Jesus loves you if you accept him as your savior and redeemer. I was like, okay, so he doesn't love me if I don't. Do you see this stuff? Now, I'm all about connecting to the divine. I know I'm connected to something. I don't know what it is. And I get that, like, the strength that comes from that. I understand that. But to say I'm nothing without of it, without it, I mean, that is horrible. And one thing that I've learned is, like, it's not this top-down, like, I'm this little nothing and I'm like asking my guides and I don't know anything. Uh, uh, I have gotten learned on that. It is more like a round table. Like I also have a seat at the table. They may have different perspectives, my guides or whoever the hell is helping me. But like, I also have a seat on the table. I had one time where I was getting in my old mindset and I was like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Something cool happened in my life. And I heard so clear. I heard, no, thank you. That was you. We're actually really impressed with that. <laughs> and it was like such a paradigm shift for me after being in this like top down, I am nothing and just trying to catch up and be as good as <laughs> God or whatever. You want to control people, teaching them their self-worth comes from a source. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of people in the health industry who do the same. One of you guys was hitting on that. It's like, oh, you, you know, you, 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 you never, you need me. You need me. Fuck that shit. No. Dude, like my job, hello, people are paying me to educate them. I don't ever want somebody to need me forever. There's plenty of people who need help. I don't need to create some kind of weird ass power dynamic like that. My job is to empower people, give them the power, help them see it within themselves, take them along that path. But like I honor and respect my people, right? But there are people out there. I know it is ballsy. <laughs> it is ballsy to talk about. There are people out there in every industry that want you to need them forever. 
And that's how I, while I'm just being all out with it, I see I see Jesus as like the first influencer that a marketing company took advantage of. And the marketing company was Catholicism. Because hundreds of years after he died, they created the Bible and they, uh, we got all these rules and all this stuff. And, you know, Jesus said this. I'm like, he didn't say that. <laughs> Never say any of that. Right? So, like, it's like taking a really powerful influence on a marketing company is like, okay, this is what, you know, they, after they died hundreds of years later, this is what they said. That's not. So, anyway, my point in the matter is if you were, if you're still, Christian, you're probably not going to like this and you probably already tuned out. But if you grew up Christian and you've gotten out of that religion, what I have found the biggest things for people to look for in their mindset is not seeing their own worth and value innately. That's like the biggest thing to overcome is like self-worth issues because your whole childhood, when your subconscious mind was getting programmed, was you're not good enough as you are. And you got to try as hard as you freaking can to do what this external source is telling you to do all the time. And you're probably actually, no, they straight up say it. No matter how hard you try, you're never going to be enough. And that's why you need Jesus to die for you. (laughs) So you're never going to be enough no matter how hard you try. Wow. Awesome. (laughs) And, And then there's all these rules. Good, good, bad thinking is a, is a thing that I see a lot of people have to work through after a lot of religious indoctrination growing up is, is, am I doing a good thing or a bad thing? Am I making the right choice or the wrong choice? It's very black and white, black and white, good, bad, good, bad. And then the shame pattern. Cause what happens when you were raised religious, do what you're supposed to be a good little girl or a good little boy by these external rules, not things that came from innately within you. And how do you feel as a result of those choices, external stuff and good, bad. And if you did bad, you need to shame yourself. And you know, and Mormonism, we had to like literally be kind of publicly humiliated and go tell our Bishop all the bad things that we did and feel all this deep sense of shame. <laughs> So shame and guilt are huge patterns that we have to overcome after religion. Good, bad thinking. Guess what? You're free to choose. Go listen to the stick figure, stick figure song. The choice is yours over and over and over and over. That is like something I've learned is like, dude, you don't, it's not good or bad. You can just choose whatever. And when you don't have this external source, like judging you, then you just get to feel, do I like the result of those choices? Mm, no, I don't. Okay. And you will start to make choices that are in alignment much easier when you're not shaming and guilting yourself and pushing yourself into these low vibe energies. Thank you guys for the support. Cause I'm pretty much like I'm all geared up for a lot of like flashback on this. So thank you. <laughs> um, what was this? I just hit on something that was so big. I've, I, I wanted to highlight, um, mm, the other, the fallout from religious upbringing. I'll just keep rolling. I, not trusting yourself. Not feeling your own. You know, one thing that I realized. Oh, this is it. This is it. The paranoia. The paranoia. When I was religious, I truly felt that I was being judged constantly. Like there was like, like God in my brain, reading my mind and judging every single thought that I had. That is paranoia. It was like, and even like in my external world, just people might be watching me, judging me. What are people thinking? What is God thinking? He's reading my mind right now. Oh, good, bad. Like, holy shit. So you're living in this constant state of being judged, being judged from something outside of you, not you. Just feeling how you, you know, allowing yourself to just feel how you feel. And do I like how this feels? I'll use pornography as an example. Show me a Mormon dude who isn't addicted to pornography at some point in his life. If that's you, you're a freaking anomaly. They all are. Pretty much all of them. I know it. My ex-husband was one of them. And I've talked about this on podcasts. And he told me I can share this if I share this part. What created... What created the addiction, which was really him being a 22 year old married guy because <laughs> you can't have sex till you get married, which is like a whole nother thing. I'm like, oh my God, like, 
<sighs> let's dangle that, you know, to each their own, but like, wow. And so of course he starts looking at pornography, shame, guilt come in, looks at it a month later, shame, guilt come in, right? And now it's this forbidden fruit and I'm bad and blah, 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 all this bullshit, right? Instead, what could have happened which I see in my male friends who are not religious. It's, they talk about it a lot openly and I respect these guys for this. They're like, I don't like how I feel when I do that a lot. I've noticed I started like being less connected in sex or I didn't objectifying women more. And like, I just don't really like how that feels. So they get to make a decision from within themselves of how they feel as a result of the choices they're making. And they're more likely to make choices that are in their own best self interest. But when we have this external rule shit, this is why I took the word accountability out of my coaching. I don't like the energy of accountability. If you want me to be your accountability coach, go somewhere else. I don't coach like that because guess what? I used to. And I'd say, what do you want to be held accountable for this week? And guess what the, guess what that turned out like? Oh yeah, I didn't do it. Blah, shame. I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. Like where I, I played with this forever. I'm like, you don't, don't, I don't want you to feel shame about it. Let's just marvel at that. Guess what happened? I changed the wording in my accountability calls. We do this every Friday with our group. And I'm like, instead of accountability, what do you want to be held accountable for? What do you want to do this week? Guess what went way up the uh, accountability item by just saying, what do you want to do? Right. And keeping it simple. Um, I want to call my mom. Okay, cool. How'd it go? Yeah, I called her. It was awesome. Okay, cool. But I want to be held accountable for calling my mom. Do you feel the energy difference on that? And that is what, when we have these external pressures of stuff that we have to meet up to and we're not good enough and we're just trying, it's so freaking beneath us. And this is what religion is. It is. It disconnects people from themselves like crazy. You don't need rules and shame and guilt and sin. The concept of sin is so weird to me. It disconnects you from yourself and your own moral compass. I learned when I left religion, I remember I was going to do something for somebody one time. And I was like, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm not like getting anything out of this at all. Like I'm not like uh, getting closer to heaven or getting my good person card or God's going to be proud of me because I did this or whatever. It was like, I just want to do that. Not, it, seriously, it was like the literally the first moment in my life that I just realized I was just a good person just because and I wasn't getting any sort of reward out of it. <laughs> I was like, I just want to do that for them. <laughs> but before... I did all sorts of nice things for people, but there was always something in it for me. It was, yeah, okay, yeah, that will make me closer to, to getting to heaven. That'll get me a little sticker on my sticker chart with God, right? So bringing this up because I just, I've, I'm, I'm tired of seeing religion destroy self-esteem and disconnect people from themselves. Yeah, religion says it doesn't matter what you want. It's what God wants. Make him happy. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And if you're Mormon, it gets worse because I promised God in their temple and the like highest promise that you can make with God that I would uh, obey my husband. We watched a little video of Adam and Eve and because Eve ate the fruit first, now she has to do whatever Adam says. Yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine what my marriage dynamic was like and then why I got into like a total narcissistic abuse relationship after that before I started diving into mindset work is my whole life. I have been programmed to believe that I, m my whole existence, the whole purpose of my existence was like, yeah, okay. Some good stuff, but also like he had the buck stops with him. It's what your husband, he has the final say, or God has the final say total disconnection from self. I didn't trust myself. I didn't even know how to identify like what I wanted. It didn't matter what I wanted. It was, what am I supposed to want? So yeah, it took some massive mindset deprogramming. That's why I've done so many plant medicine journeys. And I do recommend them with a trained facilitator for anybody who's been heavily indoctrinated by religion. My early, Many of my early journeys were me having aha moments of like, I'm like, wow, everything that they said was like from the devil. That's what they're doing. There's like in Mormonism, they teach that Satan wanted to force everyone to do the right thing. And Jesus wanted to give people free agency or the ability to choose. And I'm like, wait, whoa. <laughs> that was the ex exact opposite of what was happening. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a freaking journey, but I'm just, I had to speak up and say something because I'm tired of it. 
I'm tired of seeing how, how much bullshit people have to sort through in their psyches based off of a lot of programming. And the worst one, in my opinion, the worst one is that you are innately bad or evil and that you need Jesus to save you because you're innately bad and evil at your core. That's so messed up. Ugh, I can't stand by that. And I'll wrap it up with what I said in the beginning. Imagine that you were in a romantic relationship in which somebody told you that you're nothing without them. Hmm? Manipulation much? Control much? Yeah. And you got to do everything they say. And even if you do everything they say, you're still never going to be enough. You still need them. And you better be sorry if you don't do everything they say. And you better feel bad about yourself. Puts it in perspective a little bit. The purpose of organized religion is to deprive man from a direct experience of God. Carl, Carl Jung. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Excellent quote. That's exactly my life experience. I became so much more connected to source when I got religion out of the way. My husband truly believes that if you're a Mormon wife, you are abused daily. Yeah, dude. They don't, I don't even, you don't even realize it. Like any Mormon woman who was married is going to hear that and be like bullshit. But when you're in a belief system that he has the final say on shit, whoa, it's really disempowering. It's really disempowering. And I know some Mormon women who don't like buy into that and good for them. I did though. I was like a good little, like perfect, like everything they say, I'm just going to fully accept so I did buy into that all the way. And it did lead to a really unhealthy relationship dynamic, as you can imagine. So anyway, it's just me being me. It's just me being me speaking my truth. But I had to say something because I'm just like, I just see it impact my mindset work so much. The people who were raised religious, but especially Christian. So that's all. Okay, bye. <laughs>